Hey guys, welcome back to Money Talks. Uh, in case you're new here, my name is Ian. Today I want to talk about uh, something, <laughs> I want to talk about passive income. Now, passive income is, it, it's, it's a really overused term because uh, people throw it around Hey guys, so today I'm sharing with you my seven sources of passive income, but first... Look, this isn't a get-rich-quick scheme. Uh, like... When I hear passive, I think truly hands-off. And people are throwing around passive income uh, regarding certain, like, money schemes and internet schemes. And, and you need to take a step back and look at it and realize that it's not passive because it requires a lot of effort on a day-to-day -day basis so like passive income sure right it's like basically you're trying to disconnect the amount of hours you worked uh, from the uh, income stream right that's that's passive income so you have a a lot of work up front and then it generates income for years to come so that, that's basically the premise behind passive income uh, retirement for example is a, a form of passive income you have your retirement accounts you put money into it the money sits there and generates uh, uh, dividends and uh, and uh, appreciation and all that, and you pull on that. Uh, that that is uh, the purest form of passive income, uh, and because you don't really need to do any work to manage it. But there's a lot of internet schemes out there that are like, oh, double your money month over month, uh, work four hours a week, right? What is up, Jet Set fam? Now, I've been getting a crazy number of requests for this video, right? Thousand dollars. Thousand dollars. Every single day, passively, without any work. Uh, first of all, I mean, that's, that's just a scam, right? But uh, <laughs> that's not passive income either because you're working, right? Passive income is like you're not working. So, that's what I have to say about passive income. But, uh, so, so in 2009, actually, uh, I was in college, and um, I'll tell a little story here. Um, well, actually, that's what, the, that's what this video is about. Uh, anyway, in 2009, I'm in college. Uh, it's at the peak of the recession. I, my allowance for college from my parents is $200 a month. Uh, they're, they're paying for my housing. And then I have $200 a month to spend on food. So I'm like, all right, you know, I got to figure out, I got to get some money here, right? So uh, I, I ended up getting a job at Jimmy John's. And uh, I held that job for about a week. And then uh, I ended up quitting uh, just because it was way too fast paced for me so I quit that job uh, and then I just I spent some time really trying to figure out like uh, you know how do I make money the easiest way possible like what's what do I know that other people know as like a young millennial like where can I get my my edge uh, in uh, on uh, on making money here so what what I ended up coming up with is uh, I uh, stumbled across this website called Cafe Press. I, I imagine most people aren't really familiar with it. It's not, I don't think people really use it anymore. Uh, but basically it's a, a website where they sell t-shirts, people upload their designs, and then you get like a commission uh, if someone buys your design on a t-shirt. So I, uh, I made my account uh, at the, the beginning of 2010 and uh and i was like okay you know this can work because i i think you can earn at the time you could earn like five five to ten dollars per shirt or whatever item someone buys on cafe press this was basically the precursor to uh, teespring which is the uh the big um it's it's basically teespring replaced cafe press and and every youtuber that has a merch store pretty much has their merch store through teespring and uh teespring's uh, a lot better now I think it's a lot more uh, cleaner and and the, the user interface is a little better so Teespring um, so this was this was basically the precursor to Teespring I think it was founded in the early 2000s uh, so I got on here and I was like okay what am I gonna do I gotta make some shirts and and I remember it was it was the day I made my account uh, 
Jersey Shore was premiering and I was like okay like they're saying a lot of funny stuff there's a lot of memes and this was like right before people like even knew what memes were in 2010 so I was like okay let me take quotes from Jersey Shore design them uh, and put them on a shirt and, uh, and sell them on Cafe Press. So that's what I did. And here, let me uh, let me show you my. I gotta say, I gotta uh, I gotta give credit where it's due. My my dad's a graphic designer. Uh, he didn't help me with any of this, but like I like to think that I got some of my graphic design DNA from him. He might beg to differ, but I think I did a pretty good job here. So let me pull up the website here, and I will share it with you guys. All right, got the website running. So here is uh, the website that I that I did. Uh, the first design I did was this GTL baby shirt, Jim Tanning Laundry. Um, and that was, that was just what, uh, I can't remember who it was. One of the, one of the dudes kept saying that that was in the first episode and I was like, okay, that's going on a t-shirt GTL baby. So I, I just made all these shirts. If you want to look at, if you want to look somewhat like the situation, oh yeah, yeah. The situation said that. So if you want to look someone like the situation, which is going, which is going to be pretty hard, you need to get that protein in your diet. Uh, and then my abs are so ripped up, it's, we call it the situation, you know? And then I had random other shirts, like this was like some Facebook related thing. And then just random shit, like filibust a nut, like that was politics related. Don't taste me, bro. That was a big thing at UF uh, just a few years before. University of Florida, uh, just a few years before I got there. And then taking one for the team, like it's a grenade, like it's, you know, she's a grenade. And then I think this is what the situation said about, uh, I can't remember her name, the little short girl, the little short girl. She was just a half ass firecracker, it just fizzled out and fizzled out quick and made a loud noise. And this is some of my other shirts that I made. I don't think I actually sold any of these. These are just for, for my personal use. Uh, I'm in Gaines, Vegas, bitch. 3 a.m. Productions was uh, my little uh, um, entertainment, not my entertainment con conglomerate, but uh, it was a group of friends. We had this uh, parties and it was hosted by 3 a.m. Productions. Uh, yeah, compensating, I don't know what this is. So really, uh, you know, I got, I got a lot of designs here. <laughs> Let me show you, uh, I think, uh, reports. Okay, let me show you how much I sold. So, okay, so I first started, uh, I guess I got my first check. So basically after you earn like 35 or $50, they send you a check. Uh, so my first check was in April of 2010. And this isn't, this isn't a lot of money, okay? I. I, I'm, I know I'm kind of making a big deal out of this, but I just I think it's a cool thing to share because I did this in 2010 and I haven't done any kind of passive income venture since then. So if I can do this in 2010, like I can do anything now. So my first check, I made almost $40. You can see uh, each t-shirt that was bought. So what, what did they bought this one? This one was a, a big seller, I guess. Uh, GT Life. Um, Let's see what this yeah um, okay guess not so $39 and then I was earning a check uh, why well, I, I didn't earn another check for a while but Jersey Shore got big and it stayed pretty big for a while so like this was people were going and looking for these shirts and so I got another check six months later $50 and then you can kind of see in 2011 there's checks every month. I have a check in January, February, March, April, uh, June, July, uh, September, November. So I was getting like 35 to $50 checks each month. Again, not incredible, but it was really cool to have this extra money. Uh, so anyway, Cafe Press, if you liked what you saw in this video, please hit the like button also. <laughs> If you have any kind of passive income venture, uh, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. This year, I really want to start developing a passive income stream. Uh, I might look at Teespring a little bit, I, although I, I just feel like I'm not like that in touch with what's cool nowadays. Like Jersey Shore was really cool, 
and I was in touch with it because I was like in college and I knew I, I, I had my finger on the pulse of what was cool. I mean, Jersey Shore wasn't really cool, but like people, people wanted the shirts apparently. I don't know. Uh, so also if I end up doing a passive income venture uh, this year, uh, let me know if you think that's, uh, if, a good, if that's a good idea, if I should document it and put it on YouTube. And I, I would have to say, like, this is as close to as passive income as I got. Uh, I didn't do that much work on this. I, I put in about, like, 10 hours, uh, and then I uploaded a few designs afterwards. But really, those first designs that I uploaded paid me hundreds of dollars over the course of the next two years. So I would say this is pretty close to passive. I don't know if this can be pulled off anymore. I think the do-it-yourself t-shirt design market's pretty saturated. But I thought it was cool. Uh, just, uh, it, you know, if you're trying to develop passive income, just think outside the box and think creatively and really try to figure out what's trending and, uh, and hop on it. Thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. I hope you found it useful and insightful in some way. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and uh, like the video. If you have any thoughts about it, leave a quick little comment down below. I'd love to hear it. I respond to every comment. I'd love to get a conversation that started with you. Uh, until next time, this is Ian from Money Talks.